Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Kiki Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Disney Lorcana, which is the uh, Magic the Gathering-esque game from Ravensburger. And it's making all kinds of headlines. Apparently, it's very, very popular. And well, it was very, very short-packed. It was and very, scalpers. very short packed. And now we've got scalpers and because you've got two groups of people, right? You've got your uh, collectible card game players, your tabletop gamers, and then you've got your Disney fans that are going to buy the cards anyway, just because they're Disney and they've got nice art. But... Everybody forgot about the lawsuit. so and Everybody forgot about the lawsuit. We didn't. We actually got a tab pulled up for that. So we're going to talk about this. Geeky is actually going to lead this video. She's been covering the drama around Wakana. And I don't know if the game's actually any good or not. I have no idea. I have no idea either. There's really pretty art. I can tell you that. Yeah. Okay. Just the seven cards they had that were like the ones you could wait in line for uh, at D23. Mm -hmm. um, just those cards sold for $30,000. Oh, my God. And they were just from this last year's D23. This, oh this past, like this month, like a couple months ago, D23, this past year. So, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. So, yes. it's Yeah, Ravensburger. People were mad at me because I kept saying Ravensburger. But, you know, it doesn't surprise me because when I spell it and when I'm doing articles, I always think to myself, it's Ravensburger. So, obviously, that's what it is. Um, yeah, so people were really pissed <laughs> because when this came out, it came out on the 1st, uh, officially, and all the websites, like it was like gone in instant. Disney, the shop Disney had them and it was pretty much gone really quick. I know that the different card shops or comic shops and stuff got them. Gaming stores got them a couple weeks early, but a couple things happened. One, they gave them about a third of what they were supposed to get. And two, a bunch of those locations turned around and marked them up to uh, whatever the rates were going on eBay like hundreds of dollars for something that was like 30 bucks in their store or they put them on ebay and were selling them there instead of you know selling it as retail price which they're allowed to do apparently but it's kind of shit so they were trying to cash in also which caused some problems and now because of all the issues raven's burger has said they're going to reissue uh, the first the first series all over again so people can get them, which now the people that were scalping and sitting on them and all that and paying all this money for them are pissed because they're afraid their cards aren't going to be worth as much. Uh-huh. And now the second season, the second series is coming out next month, but we're not getting more of the first until Q1 of 2024. Yeah, I don't think they anticipate. And look, they're not. Yeah, they're not used to making card games now. As long as they don't wind up in a landfill, I think. That, I think these cards don't have any, uh, you know, any uh, uh, danger of being in a landfill like the overproduced Magic the Gathering cards. Um, you know, and Ravensburg is not as big as Hasbro either, so they're not going to print tons. And tons no, of but they. They. I mean, I think they underestimated the demand for one. Yes. But a lot of the issue comes down to we have people with bots buying up all the merchandise and sending it to third party sites like eBay, Mercari, stuff like that. It keeps happening. Like I can tell you for a fact with Monster High dolls and everything else, I used to try to get the the different collections they had at Shop Disney. Like they had um, Ma Ma Minnie the Main Attraction and Mickey the Main Attraction with Minnie the Main Attraction. The, the bots would come in even before it launched and they'd have the whole inventory wiped out. And it's, it, it does the, you know, you might be a scalper and you know that you do you, but the problem is, is that these people keep buying everything and then, you know, it's, it messes up a lot of stuff and it's kind of shit. Sorry. It is. Uh, yeah. And the thing is, is that, I mean, they don't care as long because they're only going to sell them for what they're right. selling and they're not for, doing right? any, that's, that's illegal. No. So, you know, but these companies aren't doing enough to stop that. So, I mean, it is what it is. It's just the nature of everything. Yeah, a month ago, they were going for absurd prices online, but those were like the ones that were the rare ones you get D23 and stuff. I, yeah, I told Gen you. Con, Gen Con had, Gen Con had yeah. some. The, I know the D23 ones were selling for like $30,000. Yeah, individual cards, $500. It's more now, I believe. Um, you go out to, the, the, to Disney Lorcana Twitter, and they're talking about, they put the announcement out that they were going to make it. Disney Lorcana trading card game fans, we want to share the steps we've been working to get more product to the market to meet demand. And our goal is for fans to be able to purchase and enjoy the Disney Lorcana uh, game at suggested retail price. We'll ensure a level of availability and quality that keeps the market healthy for both collectors and players. Except you're going to reissue it. And unless you market second, second, like, you know, reissue, right. people are going to not make the money they wanted to make. And people are pissed. So you go here to the comments and... um. 
Oh, there's you. Okay. So they're talking about this and people are like, I understand a reprint is necessary. There's no doubt I am on the collecting side and where the game that increases in value is a game to be played by the greatest number. However, I do not understand why I not put a small difference between the original cards. They all want, they all want the mark differently. Yeah. And they're like, how about going after the official store, selling it for three times the manufacturer's suggested retail price, and ruining it for the players, scalpers suck, but official stores doing it is just going to turn away new players. Um, they like, you drop the ball, you know, things like that. They're, they're like calling them out right and left about it. So, like, what's this one here? Lakana hopeful wait in line 14 hours for Disney Magic. Was this at one of the conventions? Yeah, Gen Con. 14 oh, I know. hours for Disney, car- was Disney it, was cards. Was Gen Con? Yeah, was this the one that they had the line, and then they yeah. had to have the line overnight or something because they, they had some kind of issue? So people were waiting there. I know that there was it was coming to stores, and people were like getting in fights over it, you know, trying to grab them off the shelves at, like, Walmarts and Targets. Yeah, so this is, I mean, remember what happened with the Pokemon cards during the pandemic. I think this is actually worse. This is actually worse, because now you've got, anytime you bring Disney fans into the mix, I hate to say it, but things always get worse. Mm-hmm. They always get worse. Look at what happened to Star Wars. Look at what happened to Marvel. And now you're you're meshing the Disney fans, mixing them up with the Magic the Gathering tabletop fans, it's going to be quite the scene. I'm just saying, it's going to be quite the scene. So then there's the whole thing that everybody's forgetting about, which is the lawsuit, because what happened was Upper Deck was working on a game. And I forget what their game was called, but they were, what does it say on here what they were working on? They were working on a game, and they had apparently hired Ryan Miller yeah, yeah. to do work for them and help develop this game. Now, Upper Deck has made games before, yes. so this is not new for them. Uh, apparently, though, Ryan here, they're alleging a jump to uh, Ra- Ravensburger, and he took the trading card game design with him, and then they put this out, and it was basically a lot of things that were, you know, from the original design for Upper Deck, they're claiming that they took it and repurposed it and just put Disney on it, and now they're suing. And I guess there are some ways people are like you can't you can't sue for this kind of stuff and mechanics and stuff. No, but I guess there was some there was some uh, copyright. Some lawyers looked at it and they said there were some copyright claims that could stick because um, one Upper Deck has been doing these games for years. Ravensburger wasn't. Yeah, there are some yeah. different things that they said between the, the differences that could they might have a case. But they that they said that Miller tried to breach his obligations to oh, capital. Russia Icor, that's what it was. So Russia Icor. So they said that um, that they said it was stolen property, and that they had they were working on this Russia Icor that Miller was working on for the company before they began co-designing Disney Larkana. Upper Deck believes that Ravensburger induced and intended for Miller to breach his obligations so he could capitalize on Miller's knowledge of the elements of Russia Icor, so he could make a near identical game of it. Yeah, so people are going to argue like you can't copy or, or trade. They said that that's systems. true, but they said there's some things that they 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 have adjusted their complaint. I don't have it in front of me, but I've seen it before where lawyers looking at it and they have, they refiled and made some adjustments to their complaint that actually could stick. So I I mean this kind of reminds me of the uh, situation with like Bratz and Mattel, where the guy developed Bratz on Mattel and he was employed for Mattel and they wound up going to a competing toy company with it. Mm-hmm. And so then Mattel argued, well, he was working for us. So anything he developed, technically, we were supposed to we were supposed to get that. And that was a big thing that went on for a while. So I'm kind of like, I didn't he win? I think he did win. Yeah, because he wasn't doing it on company time. Right. But this might be a case of like, well, this obviously was our. That was what they're working on. This is like, this is the stuff we were working on. The person left and tell them, took the game with them. Yes. And then basically just took their mechanics and a lot of the ideas behind it and just made a game for another, for their competitor with Disney. Yeah. I'm sure they offered him a shit ton of money. Because it might not be, it might not be the the technicality. Like, well, you can't copyright game rules, but might be like, well, he. This is like corporate sabotage. I don't have it in front of me. I read it a while ago. I can't remember where it is. But the the they changed their claim. They changed some of their claims and specified some things that a lawyer that was talking about it said they might have grounds because, um, like I said, Upper Deck was already making trading card games. Right, Ravensburger was doing tabletop, but they weren't yeah. doing trading card games. So you know you can't be like, well, you, they were already making it, and you can't make the argument. They just made this game when they got the guy who had their property now i don't know all the details about it they'll probably i'm sure disney will just spend a lot of money to make it go away oh, that's what they usually do um yeah. sure that's probably what will happen but there's 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 definitely a lawsuit going on with that which everybody forgets about so it's just a complete cluster but the art's really pretty and um i was on 
the shop Disney when it dropped and it was insane. Everything was selling out within seconds. People are buying it, but they're putting it on eBay. And I know when I was over there looking at eBay earlier, um, there's some here. Yeah. The first three starter decks, $120 and they've sold 12. They had two more left. These are 20 bucks each. So they're doubling the money and selling it. And they, and, and my next question is how'd they get 14 sets? People, this one guy has the, the, the Lumineers Trove mm. that everybody wants. It's a $50 set selling them for $110. They had um, they had they had ten available and they already sold fourteen and they got there because they were target pre-orders. How the hell did they get so many? You know that's yeah. that's the question. And because of they they might have had enough for the market demand had we not had all the the prospectors going and buying it all up. So they had all the they had all the uh, you know speculators buying it all up and sitting on it, which doesn't help. But they, they shorted retailers to begin with. They didn't. They were not prepared to release this. I think they were trying to rush it out to get it out there before the people that they, they allegedly stole the game from got theirs out. Because yeah. they were trying to get an injunction in place and didn't get one. But people are really pissed. And like I put some of the quotes down here um, from Twitter. And they're like, when product went out to local comic shops and local game shops a couple weeks ago in, in SoCal, Southern California, they were selling it for scalper prices. I turned... It turned me off, excuse me, off from going to their store ever again. There were a few, though, that were selling them at manufacturer's suggested retail price, and I'll continue to support these stores. Here's an idea. Get the player base to send you all the stores that scalp because of the scarcity and don't send them any more product. Mm. The ones that actually followed your vision and pricing uh, should get all the product. Players get product. The stores that played by the rules win. Yeah, then you know what happens? More local comic shops go out of business. And right. And like, why aren't there any local comic shops? Why do we have to buy all of our stuff through Amazon now? But the thing is, my next comment about that is if local comic shops can't stay in business by selling what they're selling at regular at the retail price, that they have to get something that's, that's brand new and mark it up before they even put it in the shelves, then I'm like, why are they in business anyway? Maybe yeah. if the comic book industry hadn't shit, shit the bed. <laughs> Maybe if, uh, you know, Magic the Gathering and, and Hasbro didn't shit the bed, these places would have more money and it wouldn't be a non-issue. Um, they're like, please mark them as reprints to keep the market healthy for collectors and players. There's no way the average person who wants this game can acquire a deck. It's ridiculous. Like, you want to... Thank you for letting scalpers just to kill this. They already did. You want to do in-store... This must be someone who has a store. You want us to do in-store play events with no product. You need to get those boxes into the gaming stores yesterday. The situation you created is generating more profit for resellers and the card players than it is for the gaming store or yourself. Why did you take so long to announce this? You have people fighting in Targets and Walmarts. Well, because look, why they take something is very simple. It's marketing scarcity. And look, if if you had a time machine and you could go back and buy first series magic cards when they came out back in the nineties, mm -hmm. and my brother had knowing how much those cards are worth now, what people are doing is they're thinking, well, if this thing becomes as big as magic someday, I've got first series cards, and a lot of them are probably going to stay in the packaging. You know, again. Special D23 oh Expo. Oh, God. $30,000. It actually sells. Yes. That's oh the sell price. God. 30 Because the best offer would put a line through it. That's what it sold for. Oh, my God. $30,000. And that's why that's why the scalpers are buying it. That's why you can't get it. I don't think there was enough to begin with. Then you throw in the second mar the secondary market. It's just, it's just a, a recipe for disaster. If you wanted to play this game, don't hold your breath unless you're spending a lot of money. Um, until they re-release it sometime next year or you can get the second you can start with the second series uh, if you can get them because they'll probably buy them up too uh that's your best bet oh this is disney they'll they'll overproduce it yeah it'll be worthless and they'll they'll create a shitty mobile app and then they'll link it to like my disney experience you people are asking are they gonna do a mobile version of this i'm surprised disney didn't oh give them time they will and then what will happen is um the uh, sorcerers of the magic kingdom they'll replace that mm -hmm. with Lorcana. right and you can you get special it. cards if you're in the parks Go, on yeah. digitally just imagine can you imagine disney sitting there thinking now like oh we had our own card game in the parks and it wasn't it was like eh, whatever nobody cared but if we're like, hey, there are only cards that you can get by paying admission to come to Walt Disney World, mm -hmm. you know, and oh, my God, we could have we could have special cards for every hotel you stay at. So you stay at every one of our hotels. Don't give them you, ideas. You get a special Polynesian card. Or, like you know, or, or they're something. gonna keep it paid. They're gonna so you will have these cards available at these places and you can pay like a small fortune for you, them. You can our official tournament is gonna be in Walt Disney World and you have to stay on property. Well some people will say like how can we do tournaments people can't get the cards. 
Like, you want us to play, you want people to play the game and do these tournaments and these events and these in-store yeah. gaming events. Like, we can't do it because no one can afford the cards. Yeah. Well, uh, oh, don't worry. Disney's going to, they're going to milk this. They just were not, Ravensburger was not prepared. And they might have actually underproduced them looking at what was going on with Magic and being like, well, one, this is a brand new card game. We don't know how it's going to do. And actually, the other Disney Well, they thought like, it was going to do well enough that they they allegedly pilch someone's designer, probably yeah. threw a lot of money at them. But, you know, there are other Disney card games that aren't selling that well. Like Villainous, they had it on. I, I don't know the deal. I thought that was, that was a tabletop, I thought. I don't know. I know it's on clearance. I'm Walmart pretty sure it's a tabletop. It sitting on clearance. Yeah, it's a tabletop like, game. And a lot of these Disney games don't really go anywhere, so they might have been like... Well, I tried I playing some of the tabletop anywhere. games, but they're so damn confusing. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Ravensburger made the Jungle Cruise one we have, but Funko made the Haunted Mansion one, which was ridiculously hard. It was like that. And I, I joked about this one before. It was like there's a scene in Family Guy where uh, uh, Peter moves to a millennial village and they're going to play a board game. And they're talking about the different phases of the game and how it changes after each round and whatever. And like that is the Haunted Mansion game from Funko. It's like it's not a fun board game. Someone's out there like, it's so easy. You're just stupid. <laughs> probably it's probably stupid. true. But I <laughs> like Monopoly and Candyland, okay? Uh, Old man brain can't can't do multi basic. Want to date yourself. Trivial pursuit. No, uh, why, when I read that, someone was trying to make a TV show. They're trying to make a TV game show of Trivial Pursuit. Who was it? I forget. Oh, my God. LeVar Burton. I knew I saw it somewhere. He wants to make a... a, a Trivial Pursuit series for the CW. Wait, 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 wait. LeVar Burton was in the running to be the host of Jeopardy. So this is just like... This, this, is, like, this is own. I get my own. This is boot like Jeopardy is what this is. We be reading CW. Rainbow, bitches. We're reading Rainbow. Where all the old people are on the CW. People... I'm going to go where people actually can read. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's kind of funny. That's kind of funny, yeah. Anyway... So this is what's going on. But yeah, apparently there is going to be a second series coming out next month. I think it's going to be Winnie the Pooh and I forget the other one. But there's another one coming next month. And then the first edition is going to be re-released, but not until Q1 2024. And theirs, I think, go from January to December. So that means like January, February, March, somewhere in there. Uh, good luck with that. I guess I have I have zero interest in this on any level, but uh, I'm not in the card games that much, and I'm not into Disney that much anymore. So I'm like, whatever. You can get them. Good luck. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to watch that lawsuit. I think the Mickey money will just make it go away. I think it's already going away because you're not hearing anything. No. They already get a junction or anything else, and then there's nothing. Yeah. So you know, who knows? Are right, we gonna wrap it up? We're gonna wrap it up. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.